IBD is a global disease rising around the world. It affects 3 million individuals in the US alone. Inflammatory bowel disease refers to a chronic inflammatory disease of the intestine. There are two main types of IBD, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. There are differences that happen in the microbiome in patients with IBD that then trigger a cycle of inflammation. Your immune system that's present in your intestine has learned to recognize what's your normal microbiome and what is going to cause a problem. If something throws that immune system off balance, that immune system no longer recognizes that microbiome as something that belongs to you. And so that is a constant factor that then irritates the immune system and sets up this cascade of inflammation, leading to a number of inflammatory cytokines that go all over your body, but importantly in the intestine. And the effect of those inflammatory cytokines are your intestine, are to turn what should normally be a smooth, healthy intestinal lining to this very raw, angry intestinal lining that is not able to absorb food, that can bleed, that can cause diarrhea, and can cause abdominal pain. Ulcerative colitis, as the name implies, leads to inflammation in the large intestine, or colon. Crohn's, on the other hand, can affect anywhere in your gastrointestinal tract, from your mouth to your anus. If you're diagnosed with IBD, the first stage is to understand the severity of IBD and the impact it's having on your body. And so that is often done through a combination of blood tests, stool tests, CT scans or MRIs are also helpful in picking out certain complications, such as strictures, which are narrowing in the small intestine, or fistulae, which are communication between different parts of the small intestine. For effective treatment, medications can just suppress inflammation without needing to target the immune system. The choice of medication in IBD depends on a few different things. It depends on whether you have Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, but it also depends on the severity of inflammation. We are fortunate over the past 20 years to have developed multiple medications that effectively dampen the immune response without increasing your risk of serious side effects. These medications, can be either oral medications that you take by mouth or medications that because of their structure need to be administered intravenously or by an injection periodically every two weeks or every two months depending on the medication. As our understanding of these diseases has evolved, our ability to target how the white cell is causing inflammation has also improved so that we now have five different categories of medications that each act differently on the immune system. Because you need your immune system to fight off infections, going on medications that act on the immune response and dampen it can slightly increase your risk of infections. However, the risk of serious infections is very low. The benefit of effectively treating this inflammation far outweighs the risk, which means having a normal intestine that functions normally having a normal quality of life, not worrying about relapses, and not thinking about your bowels, that benefit far outweighs this increase in risk. There are a number of different diets that have been studied for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, though it's important to note that not all diets that improve symptoms can also resolve inflammation. These diets often need to be used in conjunction with other medications to maximize the benefit of both approaches. If you're a smoker, particularly with Crohn's disease, it's important to stop smoking, minimizing exposure to antibiotics, regular exercise, ensuring adequate intake of fruits and vegetables, and a Mediterranean-style diet may all be general measures that are important for the control of inflammatory bowel disease. The treatments that work for IBD not just improve your symptoms, but resolve the inflammation so that when a patient who's on the right treatment for them has a colonoscopy, it often looks entirely normal, including on biopsies, and their intestine is functioning normally. Once you stop the effective treatment, there's about a 30 to 50% of relapsing over the next two years, and probably 70 to 80% by five years. With advances in science and with ongoing clinical trials, 
we're increasingly understanding that if you treat somebody very effectively early on, it is possible to not need that degree of rigor in treatment going forward. As part of monitoring patients with IBD, we recommend that patients get blood tests every three to six months to monitor the effect of inflammation and to pick up any side effects from the disease or its treatments. People with IBD may also need periodic CAT scans or MRIs to look for any evidence of permanent bowel damage and certain complications such as strictures. As part of monitoring patients with IBD, we'll also require periodic colonoscopies to make sure they are not developing precancerous changes such as polyps. And importantly, patients with IBD should work with their entire healthcare team to make sure they are up to date with their age-appropriate recommended cancer screenings and vaccinations. IBD is a fascinating field. Because of advances in scientific technology, studies that are happening at Mass General Brigham and elsewhere are trying to understand why IBD is rising in incidence globally and to understand what clues we can glean from that to prevent IBD. So there is a lot of research we are doing here at Mass General Brigham that is trying to develop biomarkers in your blood or in your stool that can determine what the right treatment will be for you so that you can get started on that treatment early. While we don't yet have a cure for IBD, we are closer today than we have ever been before.